Continuing from where we left off last time, we're going to compress our room filtering graph down quite a bit. We're just going to go ahead and start a new blank Dynamo file. And we are in this same sample model that just has a few extra things kind of messed up in regards to rooms. So the first thing we want to do is we want to collect all of our rooms once again. The sample files are linked below, but we'll build this one from scratch. For those who might not have caught the last video, it is linked below as well. And we're going to go ahead and collect all of our room category. We're going to get all elements of category and we have a total of 93 rooms in this model. As a suggestion, I always suggest converting these drop downs if you don't want them to change. That's done with monocle and you're able to have that kind of hard coded. So just another tip for you when working with these drop downs within Revit. So what we need to do is we're actually going to go ahead and use the get parameter value by name here. And we'll look at why here in a moment. So let's see, get parameter value by name. And we're going to go ahead and double click for a code block, kind of a scary element, but quotes let us type in text, case sensitive. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll see that we have a whole bunch of areas in here. If you recall in our last video, we did use the room dot area node. And now we're using the get parameter value by name. Why is that? Part of the reason is because the room.area node will actually report an area of zero, which is a good thing for filtering purposes. But if we want to compress this filter down quite a bit, we can use a get parameter value by name, which will actually return a blank string. Blue inside of Dynamo in Dynamo 2.13 and up indicates a number. But in this case, it is a string because it's blank. So it's really nice with this is we can actually kind of go nuts here and create a condition to where we actually get the area, the name, and the number. By default, it will work on one element. That's fine for now, but we can see we have the blue number area, orange name, and a name, which is string. Orange indicates a string inside of Dynamo at this point. So in order to make this work on all 93 of our elements, we just have to use levels. Levels are kind of a weird topic, but what they do is essentially we can tell this how to work. On every single node in Dynamo, we do have these little at two and at one at the bottom corner of the node. We want it to work on a very, very indented level at the singular level of each element. So if we click on use levels, at two is by default what it normally does, at one tells it to work on each element and kind of work across each one with these three parameters. So now we have a whole list of parameters. Some are blank. Some don't have name, some don't have number, some don't have name or number, or even an area. So that's kind of where our filter starts to take place at this point. So once again, we did this last time, equal equal for a equal to interaction. And what we'll do now is we'll double click for another code block and do a blank string. In this case, we have sublists of false and true values, which is fine. The reason is we want to bring these out to be a not sublist of items. And the easiest way to do that is a node in Dynamo called any true. What this node will do is it will tell us if anything in the list is true. In this case, it's working on the at L3 option, so way far out here. And we want it to work on the at L2 option, which are the sub lists. So that's some of the concepts here, some of these more advanced topics, like I mentioned in the previous video. Working at L2, we'll look at each sub list instead of the overall list. So now we have false and true values. As a reminder, this is a Boolean mask. So that's another term from the last tutorial. So what we'll go ahead and do is we can use that to filter our elements. What we can go ahead and do is clean up a bit too. And we'll search for filter. Our mask is right here. And our list would be our original list of elements from the very beginning. So now we have uh, something like eight nodes versus whatever it was before, which was like 20 nodes daisy chaining upon each other. What we'll do is we'll compress this a bit, clean it up. And we'll go ahead and do some alignment. So at this point, the out output is going to be the rooms that are good in our case. So if we were to add a watch node to this, we can go ahead and plug that in. And we have 84 rooms that have names, numbers, and areas. 
So we'll name this good rooms and we're good to go from that point of view. A really great thing to do would be just to group this all in. I would end up grouping it kind of like this to where all my filter interactions actually happening. So it'd be like filter for rooms with area, name and number. That way we have that. And in Dynamo 2.13 and up, you can actually collapse that, which is kind of cool. But that's probably how I'd end up filtering that. And then we know that these are our good rooms now. So we've compressed that quite a bit. This will work depending on whatever you feed into the node and all those kind of things. What's really great about this workflow, and I tend to do this right here actually. What's really great is as you highlight other criteria, let's say you want a certain other parameter to be filtered, filtered out based on a existence of it or not. So like if comments were blank, you don't want to get those rooms. You can absolutely add that at this point, which is really great. So if we were to filter for blank comments as well, we'll see that we have nothing until a room has a comment filled out. So if we were to find comments and add a letter to it of some sort. Yep, so we have one room. So you can add that criteria pretty quickly to these elements based on parameters that you're looking for. So it's kind of nice because we are doing that string conversion and we can start to filter those out in that way. So there you have it. That's a way to optimize that filter that we built from the last video. Apologies on this one being a little delayed. There was two other videos between this, one where I built a snowman in Dynamo and another one where I built the Buddy the Elf Spaghetti in Revit. This time of year is funny because there's a lot of cool Dynamo challenges and fun things to do. So those were kind of between these two. So I hope that helps out. Once again, sample files linked below and we'll uh, catch you in the next video.